A Moon's Nightmare by Michael Pennington. It was about 7.45 p.m. when I finished my jog at Marshall Park. My name is Mary and I'm 22. I like to jog because it helps to keep me in shape for fitness pageants. Marshall Park is a circular three-mile wild haven for kids, joggers, dogs, and ducks as there is a small pond at the front of the park. A thick patch of woods is directly in the middle. Around this is a concrete jogging trail. I had jogged about a mile in eight minutes and now the sun was setting and I had settled into a brisk walk. I took a drink of water. My cell phone read 755. It was near dark and I was the only one on the trail. I wiped sweat from my face. I could see my car from here. That's when I heard footsteps and they crept up fast. Before I knew it, somebody had grabbed me from behind. I screamed and kicked wildly, but I was being drugged into the woods and overpowered. The man's overly large, dry hands covered my mouth, and we were both out of sight. I need to mention I'm a black belt in karate and extremely flexible due to gymnastics. But my screams were muffled from his hands, so I focused my attention on fighting back and trying to stay calm. With all the force I had in my neck, I whipped my head back when he let go of my neck to clutch my waist. The back of my skull smashed into his nose, and I could tell that it broke. He groaned, letting me go. I faced him. I threw a front kick, seeing the outline of his body from the moonlight. My foot connected on his chin. He must have landed on his ass as leaves and stick popped underneath him. I ran a full-on sprint through the woods. Well, This was a mistake as I tripped over a log, nearly landing on my face. I managed to get up, and that's when he grabbed me again and choked me out. When I woke, I was on my back. I could see the moon, but nothing else. It was a full moon. It hung in the sky to remind me that if I was probably going to be sexually violated or even worse murdered, nobody or nothing could help me. Not the night, not the moon. I've hated the moon ever since. That's when he covered the moon with his body and ugly face. He was on top of me now. I lifted my right arm and gouged his eyes. I could feel that he had dirty, greasy black hair and a grossly undershaven face. He cried out shifting his weight as I rolled to my stomach. He was still on top of me, but I was able to scoot from under his weight again and flee. I ran for a while, then I stopped. My phone was still in my pocket. I took it out and saw that the screen had been cracked. I tried to dial 911, but it was broke, and I began to run again. I struggled to find my way out. I finally stopped to catch my breath. My head was pounding, and I realized I might have sustained a slight concussion. I looked up at the moon. It was throwing off enough light to give me away in the bush, but not enough to allow me to escape. I did not want to turn my cell phone light on for fear of being detected, so I kept it off. I took off my hoodie and tied a knot in the arm. Gripping the knot, I could now use it as a whip if I needed to. Then I saw a flashlight behind me and I heard footsteps in the underbrush. It was him. Damn it, I thought, biting down on my lip. The light was directly behind me now. It was inevitable that he would see me if I didn't run. It was fight or flight, and I chose fight. I popped out behind the tree and stood my ground. The flashlight blinded my eyes as he closed the distance. I blindly swung my hoodie, connecting the zipper with his face. He dropped the flashlight. It was another direct hit, and time for me to run again. I ran about 200 yards and stopped to get my breath. My adrenaline and stamina were beginning to give way to shock and fatigue. I didn't want to die. I remembered a few women had been attacked recently around walking trails in this area. How could I be so stupid? I thought, puffing for air. It was time to get moving again. But for the life of me, I could not find the trail. I felt like I was going in circles. I could hear him somewhere behind me lumbering through the woods clumsily. I didn't wait around this time. I took off, pacing myself, fighting back tears. I was determined to stay calm. Then I came upon a cabin. I have never seen this cabin before from the trail. I tried the door. It was locked. I pounded on it until my fist hurt. No answer. No sound from within the cabin. I walked around back. I didn't hear my attacker. I sighed a breath of relief at this. I tried the back door. It was unlocked. I walked in and immediately locked the door. I searched for anything I could use as a weapon. I kept the lights out, not trying to switch. I didn't want him knowing I was in that place. I grabbed the knife out of the kitchen. Then I heard the doorknob turn. Of course, this made me jump. I stayed quiet as he twisted the knob. I gripped the knife, ready to use it. 
Thirty minutes of silence followed. I finally got the nerve to walk to a window and look outside. I pulled the blinds and peeked out. He was pressed against the window, his light illuminating his grotesque face. He had dark circles under his eyes and saliva drooled from his mouth. It was everything you've ever seen from a horror movie. It was repulsive. I made a run for the front door, knowing he would get in. I felt safer on the run with a knife rather than backed in a corner in this cabin. I flew down the front porch steps and raced to the woods. This creep kept up a good pace behind me, never dropping back too far. Then I saw a car headlights to my left. That was Crawford Highway, which ran along the trail. I had almost made it. I was going to live. And then he grabbed me and pulled me down. I had underestimated his cardio and ability to run. I screamed, kicked, and bit into his arm, digging deep with my teeth. He gasped in pain, then slapped me. The blow stunned me, busting my lip open. He lowered his face to mine and again exposed his eyes, and that was a big mistake again. I curled my fingers up blindly, reaching for his face, again finding his eyes. My thumb dug deep into his eye socket, and I felt his eyeball pop loose. He cried out in pain and grabbed at his face, rolling over. It was now or never. I left him there on the ground to find his eye in the dirt and mud. I made it out to the road where a car picked me up. It was an elderly couple. I frantically jumped in the back and they drove me to the hospital where I called the police. The man was later arrested and charged with two rapes and one murder. It could have been me. The next day, his mugshot showed a patch over his eye. I had taken half of his eyesight and I relished that. I still have nightmares over his face and post-traumatic stress. I will never walk in the dark alone again. For the moon is a poor witness and savior when in distress.